What's going on everybody, C4 here, welcome back to the channel, hope you're having an awesome weekend, a great Sunday, we are here for part 2 of our Madden 20 realistic rebuild of the Indianapolis Colts, a rebuild that through the first episode was whelming, was very whelming through 5 years, we had 2 AFC South titles, but no playoffs, we had a ridiculous first year 1 where Phillip Rivers won the MVP, where we had some, I, I, I apologize, I think I like to know a lot about football, but I'm not, you know, overly familiar with Zach Pascal, but I did not know that this guy had it in him in that first year to go for 89 catches, 1,500 yards, and 21 touchdowns. Third all-time. The third most touchdowns ever scored in a single season. But he's a monster, I guess. Apparently. I hope he's half this good in real life. And he's actually been our best receiver, and he's been a freak. He's gone up to a superstar X Factor. But here's where our team's looking like. Um, we got John the Taylor, obviously a big, uh, big, maybe surprising selection if you're a Colts fan from that 2020 draft because of Marlon Mack and Naheem Hines, but he's our big dog. We've brought in KJ Hamler. We still have pa uh, Paris Campbell there, Breven Jordan, offensive line, a lot of familiar faces, Quinton Nelson, Kelly, Braden Smith, um, defensively, Buckner up to a superstar X factor. We drafted Riles, a defensive, actually we drafted him as an outside linebacker, moved into D end. And, uh, you know, Superstar X Factor. We have Okariki, Darius Leonard, both Superstar X Factor. Still got a lot of familiar faces. Kenny Moore, Rock Yassin, Gary Wills, Malik Hooker, Anthony Walk. We, we've kept a lot of players on this team, which is something that's good. I like in these real estate rebels, especially when you go 10 years, I like to keep, when we can, players that, you know, the casual player will be used to. Like, if you're not a diehard football fan, not a diehard college football fan. You know, you might not know when I get to this point, you know, uh, who Tylen Wallace is versus someone that knows it. But if I keep some players that are already on the roster, like Anthony Walker Jr., you're like, oh, I remember him. So I try to do that when I can in these rebuilds. But the biggest aspect, the biggest reason why this part two is going to be important here for the Indianapolis Colts is this man right here under center, Jacob Eason. Can't remember what round they drafted him, third or fourth round. Out of Washington, had some potential first round buzz, but actually we'll make him a team captain here. Um, but we decided to go with him after Philip Rivers. We let him walk. And Eason signed a six year, it was like, what is this? Can I see his contract? Five, we have, we, we have five years left, and it's only $14 million salary. And QBs play very well in this Colts offense, and he's already an 83 superstar. So we have an incredible bargain. Very talented quarterback, which is going to allow us to spend and deviate our salary cap in other positions to make this team just really, really overpowered. We're not going to have to pay again until, I don't even think we need to. We might have to the final year as we get ready for year 10. But generally speaking, we're going to be Gucci. So I I'm actually kind of excited for this part two of the three, but I do think we'll be able to get a Super Bowl. I do think we're going to see Eason take his game, get a superstar. I mean, look at his stats. Should he just looked at? He, he's gonna get. He's gonna get a dev trade increase since he's become a full time starter. Twenty twenty one, we split the season between Philip Rivers and himself. Thirty six and eight, thirty one and thirteen, which is actually not that great, but thirty eight and ten. I, I think it's only a matter of time till we have an X factor quarterback that's gonna be eighty five plus, making more than, you know, he, he's gonna be making a little bit more than your standard NFL backup quarterback. So we're gonna be in a really really good spot. So without further ado, let's get into year six of the Madden 20 realistic rebuild of the Indianapolis Colts. So looking at our draft recap, probably the best pick we made was trading. Uh, we had three second rounders. I was able to trade one of my second rounders for a future first, which was, that was probably the best pick that we did make. Uh, I accidentally made the first pick and it actually came out to be pretty good. I did not mean to hit A to draft, but we did. We got Dell Walford, right tackle from Texas, 77 with a hidden dev. I mean, Braden Smith is 30. Uh, we'll have to find a way to, to shuffle them around here, something like that, to make the most of our offensive line. We do need a new starting center. Uh, maybe Braden Smith. Could, I don't know. It's mad. I can make a move like that if I want. But one hell of a player. He was number eight in true talent. And then we need to get a safety. We got number seven in, two, in true talent. Don Trell Young from Washington State. Wazoo, 77, hidden dev. Not known for their defensive players, but that 95 acceleration definitely catches your attention. We got a 75 guard. Uh, most likely this we're going to guard. He's a tackle, but Nick Melvin here out of Stanford. He actually might be our center. Kind of more built like a center. We got a 72 tackle, 68 corner, 64 quarter back, 70 tackles, 64 safety, 61 D end. And then I simmed out the last two picks. But generally speaking, 
A really, really strong draft to start off year six here at the Rebuild. So here's how our team's going to look as we kick off year six. Did some shuffling along the offensive line, but nothing too crazy. Skill position players remain the same. O-line, we're going to move Hayes into center. Braden Smith back to guard, which is where he played at Auburn in college. And Walford will be getting the start at right tackle. And I mean, Hayes, again, it's Madden. I can pretty much move anyone I want to center. They're not going to take a big overall change. But in terms of body types, I guess he's, he's probably the most center e. Of, of all of them, and there's no way I'm moving Quinn Nelson in to center. Defensively, uh, no real changes again outside of some sh shifting around at the safety spot. Uh, Wills was our starting strong safety. I'm just going to make him a depth guy at this point later in his career. We're going to go with Young as our uh, main starting strong safety, our second round pick. We also later in the draft got Maxwell Roth at a UL Lafayette in Louisiana. He's a hidden depth. So, I mean, there could be something there. He could be one of those guys that... You know, it has a superstar dev, surprising superstar dev, and we got to find a way to get him involved sooner than later. But uh, optimism is high for this team. I definitely think we should be able to start things off with it, at least our third divisional title here in year number six. At our bye week, we are 7-2, top dogs within the division, feeling real good about ourselves right now, as uh, the two losses have also been within one touchdown. So really, we could have just as easily been 9-0 at this point as we are 7-2. Let's just get it. I always have a feeling that we always lose these games. Let's just see. We're against a one and eight bottom dwelling team against Jacksonville. How are you going to do this one to me? Oh, we won. Beautiful. We're actually winning games that we're expected to win, which is always a great thing. So look at our contracts here. I think that's Breven Jordan right at the rip. Uh, one of the best tight ends in the National Football League wants a six year deal. I think by all means we'll pay it and we'll come back to the table and make sure he gets a contract that he's happy with. Braden Smith. Should hold on to his rating fairly well. But even though four years at 29 is a little, a little much. But, um, you know, he's not a bad player. Levi Drew, D-tackle two. Give them a five-year deal. He's solid. I mean, he'll be a guy that develops into his high 80s. Okay, he wants to hold me over. Reggie Stallworth, been a solid tackle option. Five-year deal, just around a $6 million cap hit. He's happy with that. Richardson is a guy that I, I want to keep on the roster because he is a 77 linebacker. He's also a 77 D end. I feel like in a pinch, he could start for us. Um, so, yeah, we'll come back for Levi Drew. It's probably going to be the end of, well, that's not brutal contract for Malik. If he takes this, we'll keep it. Oh, nice. All right. He has loyalty to the team. But we'll definitely come back for Breven Jordan and Braden Smith and get them locked up long term. And in year six, got that first round bye. We've simmed up to the divisional playoffs where we're going to take on an 8-7-1 Titans team. We should crush them. But it's our third divisional title of the rebuild. Look at the stats here, how we got the easy one. Sensational fourth in yards, first in touchdowns on the season. 39 touchdowns, 12 picks. We got a Zeke Elliott coming off that Dallas Cowboy rebuild uh, last. Zeke Elliott-like year out of Jonathan Taylor, 1,700 yards, 18 touchdowns. We got 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns, Zach Paschal, almost 1,011 for KJ Hamler, 875 and 2 for Breven Jordan, Campbell was solid, Taylor solid out the backfield, defensively, Okariki, huge year, 108 tackles, 6 TFL, 7 sacks, we got 15 and a half from Riles, 14 from Leonard, 13 and a half Buckner, 11 and a half Levi Drew, sacks are on point here today, interceptions, eh, you know, maybe a little less than what you'd like to see, but not brutal, we had the number two offense in the National Football League. Defensively, we were 12th. Yearly awards MVP went to Justin Fields. That's his like 18th MVP award, it feels like. Jonathan Taylor coming in at number four. Eason at number six. Uh, Coach of the year didn't... Oh, come on, man. Give it to Frank Reich. Offensive player of the year with the Jonathan Taylor. He's a guy that has a chance to go up to an X Factor, actually, after this season. Same with Eason based upon his stats. Uh, for the rest of the individual awards, Do uh, Young, who... I don't even... Who was he? Our corner? Our safety. Our starting safety. Got defensive rookie of the year. Uh, best quarterback, Jacob Eason. Best running back, Jonathan Taylor. Best wide receiver, Pascal and Hamler 1-2. I kind of wish Hamler came number one because he might have a chance to get that superstar X-Factor. Quentin Nelson is the best line. This is just dominance. Utter dominance. I've never had that. Almost every player be a guy to my team. Rightfully, we, I mean, Miles Garrett probably had a crazy season. But, God damn. God damn, boy! This 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 cold team on fire! How badly are we gonna lose by the Tennessee Titans? We're taking best right now. I think we're gonna lose and only score two touchdowns. 
Please don't be disappointing. Please play with that instant touchdown. I'm feeling good. Please play as well as you did throughout the season. That's all I ask of you. That's all I ask of you, please. And give me more than two touchdowns. So my bold prediction was incorrect. But hey, look at that. It's pretty much on point so far. Number one offense. And we have one touchdown in the first half. It's a defensive battle. There's our second touchdown. Ooh, let's turn around. Two quick scores here. All right, whatever. We'll tie it up at 17. Tennessee goes down the field, gets the go-ahead touchdown. We equalize, get the ball back. Two-minute drill to win. Two-minute drill to play in our AFC Championship game. Our first one, defense get the stand, and they do. 27-24, the Colts get the important playoff victory. He's in much better looking than Jameis Winston on the day, and the Colts are headed to the AFC Championship game here in year six. We played the Bengals at least in one of our two previous playoff uh, games. It's Eason Burrow. Battle of the 2020 quarterback class. And we're not looking so hot right now. Giving up 20 points in the first half. Can we get any points to end it? Or are we going to give up some? We give up a cheeky field goal to the Bengals. We are just getting outclassed right now today. Unless we can have a freaky fourth quarter. Which is but you know possible that we close in with... Within a score. Damn it. Damn it. Eason played better. Bengals had a better team effort. It's getting year seven. This range period, we barely have any money. We have like six, just over like six and a half million bucks. So, I mean, looking at the free agents here, no one jumps off the board as an immediate upgrade. So, we're just going to sit on the sidelines here for back to back free agency periods to start the rebuild. So then our second draft, real, real good draft. I had two first round picks, but again, I'm just trying to keep backloading these until there's two for, two worthy first round selections. There wasn't one this year, so I was able to trade it with Detroit. Uh, they pick, kick back another first round. We simmed out, and my God, we got a lot of garbage in this draft. I mean, my final pick was that 69 overall D end. We got a 70 tackle, 68 linebacker, 71 strong safety. Uh, we got Dallas Golden here, 72 corner, but our best player with the number three player in the draft, Demarcus Greenwood out of San Diego State, 76, hidden dev D tackle, 6'6", 304, almost a scheme fit. Looks like an absolute beast, and hopefully we'll be pulling in something better than a star dev tree. Here we go. Here's how our team is going to line up for year number seven, 87 overall. No real changes on the offense for any of our starters. Walford came out star dev. Little annoying, but based upon their performances last year, both Jonathan Taylor, who has now got the wrecking ball ability, and Jacob Eason, who now has the fearless ability, both two new superstar X factors to bring to the offense. That's exactly what we needed. Defensively, no changes to be had. Um, outside of really, you know, really getting a little bit different faces at corner, I guess, but. Generally speaking, still 98% of the same defense we had a year ago. Firmly expecting to win another AFC South Divisional title and bring us to number four and go on a big-time playoff run and not fall flat against Joe Burrow and the Bengals yet again. Well, that's sensational. Just to piss away a whole year because our team's bipolar. We're 2-5 and five at the midway point. Bottom dwellers in the South somehow. Round of applause. We actually might get fired, honestly. I feel like when you like have like a couple strong years and just a horrible year, you might get fired. I don't know. No idea where Frank Reich's job security is at. Look at our contracts here. First off, we got Riles. Wants a hundred plus million dollar deal, but he's worth it. Darius Leonard. Can't let him go. Three year deal. Worth it. We'll come back for him. Bobby Okariki. Mr. Dev Trade himself. Worth it. Of course, he wants more money. Really, those are the only guys we have to pay Wills, Walker, they've been serviceable, but at this point just doesn't make a lot of sense to keep them on the roster. I mean, maybe. Those are like really affordable deals. If they take those offers, I will bring them back just for namesake. But uh, we're going to have to definitely come back and re-sign our two starting linebackers here in Leonard and Okariki. At the end of year seven, uh, not only were we god awful, 5-11 and in bottom dwellers, Bobby Okariki wanted to play for a new team. So he's very much on the cusp of, I might just say, screw it and franchise tag him. But yeah, it wasn't uh, pretty much a shit show of a year. No other way to put it. Uh, for a hidden devs, I don't know if we unlocked. Ooh, Greenwood is a superstar dev. So we'll make him our new D-tackle too. Gives us maybe a trade piece in Drew. 
We do need a corner, which would be pretty cool. Pretty big need for the squad. Looking at our stats this year, I mean, it's a complete wash. Eason still didn't play brutal. 38, 26, and 8. 11, and 9 for Taylor. No 1,000-yard receivers. Defensively, 100 tackles for Leonard. Defense drastically dropped off from a year ago. Buckner, 11 and a half sacks. Interceptions way, way down. Uh, MVP, Justin Fields, because of course it is. Uh, let's just see. Do we get any any Colts here? Absolutely no Colts. Outside of Goggles being kicker of the year. So, yeah, I think we're going to franchise tag Okariki and then maybe try to trade some of our death pieces for a big-time corner if we can't draft one in the upcoming draft. Free agency, we did franchise tag Bobby Okariki, and we still have, like, a little bit of Skrilla there to spend. Ooh. Terrence Bayer. There's no way we can sign him. Yeah. Ooh, what, what does he want? No way. That was laughable even think. We have Bob Cole. This guy actually looks... This guy actually looks within our price range. Give him 5 mil, 2.5, something like that. Three year, 22 and a half. Hell yeah. Hell to the friggin' yeah. Bob Cole, great name. Bob Dole. Let's do this. So here's a look at our draft recap. It was a uh, good draft. Not when we, we, we knew what we needed coming in. We needed corners. I couldn't find any trade partners for our depth. So we get Allie White, 73, hidden dev out of Auburn. We got another first-round corner. We had two first-round picks. Rashad Herman out of BYU, 74, hidden dev. Both these guys look pretty damn decent. We got a 69 corner, 72 deep tackle. Um, really, the only guy below us, you know, that looks like a bad pick was Lance Younger, the tackle at Cincinnati, 59 overall. But he also came with a hidden dev. So, yeah, real solid draft. Hopefully one of these two corners gives us something better than a star dev, though. Year 8 for the Indianapolis Colts, and things are actually looking pretty good considering how awful and ridiculous last season was. Offensively, we're coming back with all of our starters, and now Breven Jordan has gone up to a superstar X-Factor. Would have hit that last year. Got max security, which honestly is like, I don't know. I don't want to say it's the worst ability to get, but it's not a, you know, it's not a flashy one on the defense. We are starting to see some regression there from Buckner. We'll make Greenwood a starter for now, but I think long-term Drew and Greenwood might be uh, a longer-term pairing. Uh, we're going with our two rookie corners. We'll be getting some snaps here, White and Herman. We brought in Cole and free agency. Looks like a great get. We're still going to be going a little undersized, but we know what Walker brings to the table. Doesn't really need to look at that 6-7 overall. He plays better than that. So uh, defense is, is better than it has been, even though it's getting... Pretty close to that cutoff point for some of those old guys, especially Okariki and Darius Leonard and, and DeForest Buckner. So hopefully we can win here in year eight because I think the you know, father time is about to wreak some havoc on our defense sooner than later. All right, for contracts, I literally just sneezed halfway through signing Quentin Nelson, but we were able to re-sign him and <laughs> to, to, to redo that video. Um, but, you know, the, the Dallas Cowboy rebuild, we had Tyron Smith and Zach Martin really do like they're almost 40. So as long as Quinn Nelson wants to play, we're going to probably have him for the whole rebuild. We got Buckner here. I think we're ready to move on. Even though that's a totally reasonable deal, he's going to regress and be our third D tackle come next year from an overall standpoint. So it's probably best we move on. But he's been really, really solid. Moy, superstar dev corner. Sure. Need some of those. Uh, probably the beginning of the end for Okariki. Gin. I feel like we can do better. Leek Hooker's kind of getting old. Paris Campbell kind of getting old. Walker definitely getting old. So I actually feel like at the end of this season, maybe we'll check a, a quick career stats. Because I think Walker, Hooker, and, and Paris Campbell could have some decent stats. Same with Okariki. Year 8 is coming on, and 9-7 and seven is good. At, oh, that's an ugly AFC self. Third place, but we made the playoffs. Yeah, baby. Uh, week 17 had a player of the week. Bobby Okariki, nice. Saquon Barkley moved his talents to the Jets. That's weird. Uh, we had some depth traits before we look at the overall and how we got here. On the offense, nothing. But on the defense, White, oh, of course. Two star devs, Herman and White are two first-round picks. Uh, you know, I guess. I guess so. We have the stat. Maybe they, hopefully they played better statistically. He's in fifth in the league in touchdowns. I like seeing that. Uh, strong year, John the Taylor, almost 1,300 yards, 13 touchdowns, 11 tutties for Paris Campbell. Defensively, 97 tackles, 4.5 sacks, 3 picks, Okariki, 11.5 sacks, Riles, 11 Buckner, 9 from Ginn. Actually, he probably might need to give that guy a contract extension. 
Um, Moya, three picks. Two for Herman. Looking at the Yearly Awards MVP with the Deshaun Watson. Hey, at least it wasn't Justin Fields again. You know? Um, for individual awards, I don't think we're going to have anything. Nope. Colts kind of held off the score sheet here. I guess when you're third in your own division, that's kind of what happens. But we have a chance to run the gauntlet here. Let's see if we can make some magic. But actually, before that, let's look at some of the stats of the guys that we know are going to be moving on this offseason. Just because just we know what's happening. Um... And wide receiver Paris Campbell has finished his Colts career, regular season, 509 catches, almost 6,100 yards and 60 touchdowns. That's definitely a very, very respectable career. Defensively, Bobby Okariki, 936 tackles, 53 TFLs, 26 and a half sacks and seven interceptions. Walker, over 800 tackles himself, 60 TFLs, 15 and a half sacks, five picks, both really, really nice career. Uh, Buckner did a lot of damage with us. Uh, you, know, it's, you, know, you know, some of those stats are definitely split between us and the 49ers, but still, 161 TFLs, 109 uh, sacks. That, you know, those are fringe Hall of Fame numbers. So, outstanding career for DeForest Buckner as well. But it's no time to get reminiscent. No time to start playing that boys to men. We got to go on this gauntlet here, and we're going to try and surprise the world. We're finally for us to be that 9 and 17 that makes the Super Bowl, okay? In year 8. Eason has actually played well in all of our sim games. It's been more so our defense. That hasn't got stops when we need it. So we're starting out this one real hot, 14-0. We played the Texans week 16 of the regular season, and we did beat them. So uh, we know that we have a win winning formula against them. We know that they're not as good as we thought. You know, they got Deshaun Watson, yeah, but that's about it. You know, J.J. Watt's long gone. Pretty much, it's, it's a, not a great defense skill position. They don't get Andre Hopkins. So, I, you know, this is the result I expected. I expected a professional victory. Never in doubt. 31-15. Four touchdowns for Jacob Eason. Almost 100 yards for Jonathan Taylor. And first round of the gauntlet goes to the Colts. We're going up against the 12-4 Cleveland Browns. They're a real, real solid-looking roster. Baker Mayfield. Still got Denzel Ward. Miles Garrett. Beast. So, yeah. It's going to be a tough game. Much tougher opponent, I think, than the Houston Texans will be. And you can see it's a close matchup. Defenses are playing strong. 10-9 entered in the second half. Colts get a touchdown. Beautiful. Uh, I definitely like and would trust Eason in the situation. Over Baker Mayfield. It's tied 17 apiece. Everything to play for here in the fourth quarter. A defense holds them to a field goal. Two-minute drill to either tie or win this thing in regulation. We go all the way down field. Just like that. We ain't settling for field goals. We get the dagger. The crucial touchdown. Solid game from Eason. But it was a defensive battle. Trey Lance is now the thing for Cleveland. It's not, it's not Baker Mayfield doing that thing. It's Trey Lance doing that thing. Okay. But Jacob Eason, just a little bit better on the day. Colts 2-0 running the gauntlet. And just like that, we're in the AFC Championship game. And in the championship game, it's the 10-6 Miami Dolphins. Let's kind of get a preview of the roster. See where they're at. They got Jamar Chase, Raekwon Millen, Xavier Howard, and a random guy as their X-Factors. Micah Parsons, Tua Tagovailoa there. Yeah, they're a pretty solid roster. Look at that. We're at 88. They're in 83. Come on, man. Let's get a ticket to the Super Bowl. Another battle. So far, every time it feels like it's been like a battle of the 2020 quarterbacks. It's been more so Eason versus Joe Burrow. And, e and Joe Burrow has got the better of them. Now it's Eason versus Tua. I don't know. Maybe that's just always going to be something that's, that Eason just can't beat his fellow classmates. I don't know. But uh, down 10. Down seven in the second half. We start out hot. Get a touchdown tied up 17 apiece. Both defenses playing solid. That's for sure. There we go. Go ahead. Score the touchdown. Ooh. Kill in the clock. Kick the field goal. It's over. And in year eight, the Colts are making their first playoff appearance of the rebuild. Clean performance season. 71% completion percentage. Look better than Tua. Ten catches. KJ Hamler. He had a huge game. And like that, the Colts are looking for their second Super Bowl ever. Jesus Christ. I feel like our record was bad. We're in the Super Bowl against the 9-5-2 Seattle Seahawks. Oh, Madden. Oh, Madden, you silly goose. Well, they got Russell Wilson and Geno Atkins as their X-Factor. Sean Wayne, Michael Gallup as their superstars. We are a much better team. Please, can we put a two-tie team out of their misery in the Super Bowl? Let's, let's handle them. Let's absolutely handle them. You can't, you know, show your face in public. 
be like, if I, if I got to go out and mow the lawn later, my neighbor's going to be like, he lost to a two. You know, you know, he put a YouTube video up and he lost to a two tie uh, team in the Super Bowl. Come on, man. I got my pride on the line here. The team that I beat can't lose to the. Oh, my God. We're getting skunked so far. We are holding them to field goals, though. We could definitely chop away and get back into this by getting tutties. Because our defense has been playing real, real tight into the red zone. Come on. One point lead. We miss an extra point. No. Okay, we tied up 20 apiece. Three minutes to go. We have the ball, the final chance. Come on. Come on. Kick the field goal. No. Oh, yes. Screw you, Seattle. You do not get to win the Super Bowl with a 9-5-2 and two record. Hallelujah. Year 8. And this Colts rebuild will go down as a success But I remember not too long ago, the last couple of Madden's Colts have been an absolute cursed team that do not win Super Bowls when Andrew Luck was there. But luckily, all it took me was eight years to win the Super Bowl against a two-tie team that had the audacity of showing up. If I was 9-5-2 and two and I made the Super Bowl, I wouldn't even show up. I'd be like, sorry, guys. I don't know how we got here. Probably some sort of miscommunication. You know, it's my boy Chuba Hubby right there. Nice win. Nice win. Look at Pete Carroll's neck. What's going on there? Big game Paris Campbell. Set to hit free agency. Three touchdowns. That's his final game in a Colt uniform. It's one memorable one. Super Bowl MVP. He's going to get paid by someone on the free agency market. Maybe it's going to be us. I don't know. Now, knowing that little nugget of information, I might want to at least extend one contract offer out to him. We've got Eason, Jonathan Taylor, KJ Hamler. And I don't know who that is. Darius Leonard, probably? No, Anthony Walker Jr., of course he's up there. 67 overall, start middle linebacker. Been here forever. Final hurrah. There we go, man. We got two more years left to see if we can add a couple more Super Bowl trophies behind Frank Reich in that main menu. Wasn't going to do this, but Ginn played well eight sacks, and he doesn't want to come back. What about you? No, I'm not giving you a two-year deal, but where's Paris Campbell? You get three touchdowns this year, but you at least get a contract offer. Kiss my ass, then. Kiss both sides. Put a little bit of money to spend here, and I really am only seeing one upgrade. That's a legit upgrade. So we're going to go at wide receiver again. Michael Baptiste, 83 deep threat. He's only 25 out of Colorado. 93 acceleration. Not deep threat. That's a, not a very fast deep threat, but you can see the route running and the catching is very, very nice. And would be a welcome to wide receiver. Th well, actually, it would be a starter because we have Pascal on the slot. So a wide receiver two on our team next season. That was one of the worst drafts I've ever seen. Again, we're picking at pick 32, which is a blessing and a curse. But I didn't have one guy with a first round grade. So I, I made a I made a big board. Simmed it out. Uh, we got a 70 guard in the fourth round. 67 wide receiver, normal dev. This was this guy was number 17 in true talent. Carson Valentine. It's the one pick I made. 71 normal depth guard. It's just awful draft. An awful... Like I, I want to see. Obviously, the first round ahead of our pick might have been solid. But I want to see after us. Let's look at this. Second round. Anyone in the 70s? There's three. What do we got? Did I miss on anyone? Normal. Normal. Third round. Actually, a couple 70s. Big B. Ooh. Okay, we missed out on it. There's, okay, that guy's a beast. Did not have him scouted. We got normal. Ooh. Well, there's the two guys. There's the two guys you would have wanted right there. Bang, bang, boom. Enrique Bayer and Big B. No diamonds. It's a horrible draft. Horrible draft, man. Bullshit. Defend our Super Bowl title here in year nine. We're still like, look at that offense, man. 95 overall offense. One of the best offenses we have built. X Factors. It's filthy. It's absolute filth. Uh, no new starters on offense, though, outside of Baptiste was our one lone free agency signing. Nice little deep threat on the outside. Defensively, linebacker course definitely looking a little different here, but we still got the Maniac. D line, yeah, it's looking a little thin there. But, um,. You know, we'll just get some some Rogaine and we'll, we'll we'll thicken up the main here of this front seven. Just give me one more year. We still got one more free agency where we can spend all of our available money. We just got to be a little bit cautious this season. Our secondary is really as good as it's been at any point in the rebuild. So that's 
That's positive. And I definitely think right now we're totally going to be in contention for that fourth divisional title. But as we proved last year, as being the third place team in our division and winning the Super Bowl, you know, divisional titles don't really matter. All right, so being bipolar, it's going to rear up its ugly head here. Three and four. Got to have to put up the work down the second stretch here if we want to have a chance at, you know, being good. Uh, contracts, who do we want to come back for the final year of the rebuild? We do not have a lot of money to spend, which could be annoying. But we definitely want Jonathan Taylor. We definitely want KJ Hamler. We definitely want Young at safety. Oof. Well, those are the only three. So we're going to be able to sign those three and probably have enough money to maybe sign one veteran for year 10. Yep, yep, win the Super Bowl, and then you just don't make the playoffs the next year. It's, it's, it's what happens sometimes. It's, what ha it's inevitable, and it's just what happens. Eight and eight, what a perfect way to follow up winning the Super Bowl. Uh, top ten year to Jacob Eason. Wasn't his fault. Real solid year, Jonathan Taylor. Receivers were, I guess, considering Baptiste was our big free agent sign. That's very underwhelming, to be honest with you. Defensively, big change to the linebacking core. Ten sacks. Greenwood. Riles had a nice year. 20 TFLs, eight and a half sacks. Picks were definitely down a little bit. MVP. Oh, of course it is. Justin Fields for individual awards. Any Colts showing up here? Nope. Let's get into year 10. And thank God it's not Super Bowl or bust. Because I feel like this team probably, we probably peaked. But you never know. They could put up a miracle run. It's bipolar, right? So that means... Next year, we're going to be good. Forget what you know about signing free agents. You know, I don't even know if there's one that we'd even really consider signing. Maybe, maybe one of these DNs. Uh, we barely have enough money. I couldn't even make a cut. A cut or two without killing our roster to make a free agency signing. So we're going to have to roll with the exact squad that got us 8-8 eight eight last season. Should be fun. So for our final draft, we really just need linebackers. So I drafted a safety to see if maybe we can mix and match some of our safeties and linebackers here. Uh, this guy's actually a really nice looking player. 76, hidden dev. We got a 77 corner normal dev, LaMichael Carmichael from Stanford. <laughs> Great name. Uh, got 260 linebackers here. We got Jaden Nixon and Carl Nails from Ohio State. Sounds like a WWF wrestler from the 90s. You know, a jobber. Carl Nail's in here just getting whooped by Tatanka. So, uh, hopefully, with the Ramsey pick, we can move at least one of our safety because now we have three solid ones to the linebacker spot and uh, kind of have some cover there for year 10. So, as we gear up here for year number 10, we did mix and match on the defense. We're still bringing forth a 95 offense. KJ Hamler with Most. He's now an X Factor. I have no idea how he got that last year. Didn't even go over 1,000 yards. Cool. Not going to complain. Not going to complain. Offense, we still got guys that ran the whole gauntlet. Jonathan Taylor's been here since day one. Eason since day one. Pascal since day one. Nelson. Braden Smith. Um, Hayes has been here long enough. Same with Breven Jordan. You look at the defense. Actually, you know what? Honestly, even he's completely random. That stalwart guy. He's been here forever. Six years, seven years now. Uh, defensively, so here's what we did. The D-line's really solid. Riles is 98. Should be a member of the 99 club sooner than later. Um... Obviously, one weak spot there at end, but it's not you know it's not the end of the world for sure. Uh, secondary looks solid. Ramsey will go to strong safety. Cole will stay at free. We moved Young, who has our 87 strong. We were doing an outside linebacker. He's an 85. Moved our backup strong safety, who is Whittington, to middle linebacker. He's a 73, and we still got the maniac Darius Leonard doing his thing. So as we gear up for year 10, 95 offense, man. If, as long as Madden doesn't rob us, a 95, a 91 overall team, but a 95 offense. Should be good enough to get us a divisional title, right? All right, baby, big year 10. feel like we got we got the makings to be one of the juggernauts this year. And again, 95 offense, got to be up there. Probably got top. Didn't make the playoffs, 95 offense. Week 17 got shut out. Bye. Why? But why? But why? Why? How? How? No. No other descriptive words you can say about it, man. It's disgusting. 95 offense. What were we in the league? We were the 
13th offense. 25th defense. 4 and 12. Our worst year of the rebuild. Why not come at the end when we're supposed to be peaking? Eason did not have a good year, only 21 touchdowns. Taylor was all, you know, acceptable for having two X Factor wide receivers. No one went over a thousand yards. No one got over 10. Uh, what a, what a bullshit year. Dwayne Haskins is our MVP somehow. I don't think we're gonna have anything. Oh, we had something there. I went too fast. Ramsey, defensive rookie of the year. Cool. Our safety. Well, you know. It's still a win of a rebuild. We won a Super Bowl. Just a garbage way to end it. But what can you do? It's Madden. Sometimes Madden's going to Madden. Sometimes Madden's going to Madden and Madden Madden right here. So I guess we can look at our career stats. Look back upon what we've done. Jacob Eason so far through 10 years. 34,000 passing yards. 275 touchdowns. 83 picks. Looking good. We got 11,000 yards. 92 touchdowns for Jonathan Taylor. Good. I pretty much If you ever get over, like, you know. 10,000 plus rushing yards. You're pretty damn good. You're probably like the best, you know, a top 10 running back of that decade, uh, which he was. Zach Pascal, this freak, probably the big surprise player of the rebuild. 786 catches, 10,000 yards, and 100 touchdowns. Hamler spent most of his time with the Denver Broncos, but still did a lot of damage with us. Was getting almost, you know, 900 yards a year. Double digit touchdowns close to. For even Jordan, though, spent his whole career with us through nine years. 650 catches. Almost 7,500 yards, 43 touchdowns. Um, on the defense, the maniac, Darius Leonard, finished with almost 1,100 tackles, 94 TFLs, 68 and a half sacks, 10 picks. Moy had nine picks. We got 78 and a half sacks, 112 TFLs from Kazim Riles, who was good, 40 sacks for Drew. On the pick standpoint, I mean, we never really had a dominant corner. Moy is probably the best corner we've had on the team, 88 superstar. And he's, you know, he's been, he was okay. Like, he averaged, like, what? Like, like, a pick or two a year, maybe. If that's, you know, yeah, it's, you know, two picks a year. Uh, well, it's still a successful reel. We won a Super Bowl. It might not have been pretty. might have been kind of ugly. But it was still a successful rebuild. So it's up to you guys now in the comment section below to vote on what team you want to see next. I want to move back into the NFC. So we have the Minnesota Vikings, the LA Rams, Carolina Panthers, Seattle Seahawks, and San Francisco 49ers. We're down to five teams left in the NFC. Let me know in the comments what team you want to see next. I can tell you right now, for the Vikings, probably because they have two first-round picks, I actually might start before the draft. I'm not sure yet, but I might start actually before the draft and, and redraft that one. Um... Every other one, though, like the Rams will put, take over after the draft. The Panthers will take over after the draft with Derek Brown. Uh, the Seahawks will take over after the draft with their great Jordan Brooks first-round pick. And the Niners. I mean, the Niners are another team we probably could consider taking over before the start of the draft because they would have two first-round picks after they traded DeForest Buckner away to the Indianapolis Colts. But let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. As always, if you're first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Very close to 130,000 subs. Smash that like button if you enjoyed, because likes help the video on YouTube. And I'll catch you guys back here tomorrow with episode 37 of Flashback Pinks. See you then. Peace out.